guys, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to be talking about a new foundation that I've been testing out. I've actually been testing out a lot of new foundations. If you saw my drugstore haul, I will link it down below if you haven't, but if you did see it, you will notice that I picked up a couple new drugstore foundations and I've also been testing out a couple higher end foundations. And if you're new to my channel, I'm kind of a foundation junkie. I'm always trying out new foundations because I always feel like there's going to be one better than the one that I just tested out. So I'm always on the lookout for the next best foundation. And I wanted to pick this one up because I heard a lot of people talking about this in their favorite video here on YouTube but I actually haven't seen any like first impressions or reviews on it yet so I just kind of went in blind with this foundation and really wanted to see what my thoughts were on it and share it with you guys so that is what I'm going to do today this is the wet n wild photo focus foundation I actually picked this up in two different shades I got soft beige and then this one right here which is golden beige which I think I'm going to use today because I do have a semi self tan it's kind of starting to fade off but I think this is the one I'm going to use today for the demo just because it would look a little silly if it was like super light and the soft beige is just a little too light for me right now. So I'm gonna be using the darker one today. And as you can tell, I have no makeup on my face, no eyeshadow, nothing. My skin is just freshly cleansed and moisturized and then I'm just gonna go in with the foundation. I like to do this for my foundation reviews and first impressions. Just in case you're someone that doesn't like to wear a primer, you can kind of see what it looks like on my skin without a primer. But I will apply blush and bronzer over top just so you guys can get a feel for what the foundation looks like with something over top of it. So before I jump into the demo, I'm going to start off like I normally do. I'm going to give you kind of like the statistics on the foundation. So again, this is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. The shade I have is Golden Beige that I'm going to be using today. And it does come in a glass bottle. It is one standard fluid ounce. I actually like the fact that they put this in a glass bottle. Of course, it's not going to be the safest for traveling. So if you do plan on traveling with this, obviously it could break. So it's probably not the best for traveling. But I just think it's a little nicer that it is in a glass bottle. But the thing that I really, really like about it is that it comes with a spatula applicator, which if you're someone that does makeup like freelance makeup or you're a makeup artist, I think this is perfect because you can actually apply the foundation to the back of your hand and then apply it to your clients or, you know, your little metal pan. I actually like this a lot better than having to pour it onto the back of my hand because I feel like I waste so much product when I have to do that. So I actually really like the fact that it comes with a little spatula so I'm not wasting so much product. And online, you can get this in 20 different shades, but if you're trying to locate it in stores, I actually only found like five or six shades every store that I went to, and they were all a little bit different. So I don't know if that's just because I live in the middle of the cornfields in the Midwest, or if it's just everywhere, like they just put certain shades different places, but online you can get it in 20 different shades. And the shade Golden Beige does have more of a yellow undertone to it, just FYI, but I do prefer that on my skin tone. I just feel like it balances everything out just a little bit better. And this foundation is cruelty free, so if you are someone that looks out for that, you are good to go with this one. And the best part about this foundation is that it only retails for $6, and for a drugstore foundation, I feel like that is super affordable because drugstore foundations are just I feel like all of the other drugstore foundations that I've even looked at purchasing have been at least 11 to $16. So for this only being $6, I feel like that's a really good price. And I actually think I only paid like $4.99 for it. So I got it about a dollar cheaper. Like I said, I have been trying it for a week and a half. And trust me, a week and a half is plenty enough time for me to form an opinion on it. Like after the first use, I always know if I love or hate a foundation. So from a solid week and a half of wearing this, I definitely know if I love it or not, which you guys will find out at the very End. But before I jump into the demo, I do want to let you guys know my skin type in case you haven't watched any of my other videos. I do have dry skin, but my skin is also kind of aging as well. And I know that I'm not typically in like the aging age <laughs> for my skin to be aging, but I do have a lot of hormonal issues that have kind of thrown my body into a hormonal state of almost premenopause to menopause. I actually had to treat my skin like it is in that time period of my life versus just, you know, like a normal dry 20 year old. So as far as my skincare goes, I do treat it for dry skin. I use a lot of oils and serums on my skin, but I also use anti-aging products as well. So my skin is just kind of like a mess. It doesn't know if it's 90 or if it's still 20. But for the most part, my skin is dry and it kind of just stretches across the board. So if you are someone that's a little bit more mature my skin kind of relates to that so hopefully this video will be helpful for you as well and if you are just younger with dry skin 
my skin is definitely dry. So now that you know a little bit about my skin, let's go ahead and jump into the demo. I am going to be using the Beauty Blender as well as a flat top kabuki brush, which is pretty standard and what I do on all of my foundation reviews. Just because I feel like most people do have a flat top kabuki brush, if not this exact same one by Sigma. I know it's so popular here on YouTube and I know a lot of you guys have it. So I always like to test it out with this. And then I'm obviously gonna be using a Beauty Blender because this is what I usually use pretty much on a daily basis. So I'm gonna be using this today as well. Well, so I'm just gonna dip the spatula into the foundation like so and then I'm just going to apply it onto the back of my hand and I'm just wiping off both sides of the foundation on the back of my hand and that's what I'm gonna use to apply it to one side of my face so I'm gonna start off with the beauty blender and I'm gonna apply that to this side of my face right here and I'm just dabbing the beauty blender onto the back of my hand to pick up the foundation and then I'm just gonna start pressing it in my skin I always like to show you guys the demo so you guys can kind of form your own opinion on it because maybe you're looking for something different in the foundation than I am. So before I tell you my thoughts on it, I always like to show you guys what it looks like as it goes on so you guys can kind of form your own opinions on it. And then you can see if you know, you obviously want to go purchase it or not. That's the point of this video. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. And then of course I'll share my thoughts on it at the very end since I have been wearing it and I'll kind of go over like the wear time and all of that. And I am going to bring it down on my neck just a little bit, just because, like I said, my self tan is fading a little bit, so I don't want it to be like two different colors. Okay, so that's what the foundation looks like on this side of my face using the Beauty Blender. I'm going to zoom up and show you guys what it looks like a little bit better and a little bit more up close. But first, I'm going to apply it to this side of my face because I am going to go back in with a second layer. So I'm going to be using this Sigma F80 to apply it to this side of my face. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to apply it to the back of my hand with the spatula, the front and back side. And then I'm going to go in with the flat top kabuki brush and start pressing it in my skin. And when I apply foundation, no matter what brush I'm using, I really like to go in with more pressing motions versus swiping motions, just so that I make sure that I'm getting the pigment actually onto my skin instead of like wiping it away. All right, so now this is what this side of my face looks like using the Sigma F80. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you guys out now so you guys can see a little bit closer. All right, so now you guys are up just a little bit closer. Hopefully you guys can see my face a little bit better. So this is the side that I use the Damp Beauty Blender. And then this is the side that I use the Sigma F80. I definitely prefer this side using the Beauty Blender just because I feel like it looks a little bit more hydrated. Anytime I use a Beauty Blender, no matter what foundation it is, I usually like the outcome a little bit better if the foundation is a little bit more on the matte side, which I do feel like this foundation is, especially if you're someone that does have dry skin like I do. I feel like even a satin to natural finish foundation come off looking a little bit matte on dry skin. So for that reason, I definitely prefer the Beauty Blender with this foundation in particular. This side just looks a little extra dry on my skin but I will say using the beauty blender does take a little bit of the coverage away I feel like the Sigma F80 definitely gave me a lot more coverage than using the beauty blender so for that reason I'm going to go back in with just a little bit more foundation on this side and then blend it out with the beauty blender so right now I would definitely say I had a nice medium coverage with the beauty blender but it's not all the way full coverage to cover up any of like my darkness on my cheeks from discoloration which is definitely something that I do like to cover up so that's why I'm going in with just a little bit more foundation. All right, so I just went and applied some blush, bronzer, a little bit of highlighter right here on the highest point of my cheekbone. And what else did I do? Oh yeah, I just applied a little bit of lip color. Um, nothing too special because my lips are super dry right now. And then just a little bit of mascara so that my eyes didn't look too silly and kind of like lost with the rest of my makeup. And the rest of my makeup went on beautifully over top of this foundation. It really just melts in with everything. And I didn't set my foundation today. I will say I have been setting it on and off using the Photo Focus powder that goes along with this foundation, which I am a huge fan of that powder, by the way. It is so good. It's very lightweight, but it does give you a little bit of coverage, but it just looks so airbrush on the skin so I really do like that powder um, in conjunction with this foundation so the reason why I wanted to mention that the rest of the products actually went over top of the foundation really well is because a lot of the foundations that I do use I have to set the areas that I'm gonna go in with blush or bronzer with and with this foundation I don't have a huge problem I feel like my blush and bronzer just go like right over top of the foundation so beautifully without tugging on the foundation and kind of moving things around I personally do like to set those areas still just because like I said I 
I want a like really flawless seamless finish right here But I also don't go in and like rub my bronzer like this or my contour I actually just go in and kind of do really small circular motions and blend everything out So just keep that in mind, but I haven't had any problems but now back to the foundation And now that you guys know that all of the rest of my makeup went over top of it really nicely I want to first touch base on the consistency of it. So the consistency is pretty liquidy as you can tell on the sponge, but it's not so liquidy that it's gonna make like a huge mess. It does have a little bit of hold to it, but the actual consistency of it itself is almost like a serum. When I actually first applied it for the very first time, I was like, oh my goodness. I actually didn't think the coverage was gonna be there just because of how it felt on my skin. I just thought it was gonna be like really slippery on my skin and kind of get choppy, but it didn't do that at all. It actually gives a solid medium coverage using either the Beauty Blender or the um, Flat Top Kabuki brush but it can be built up to full coverage very easily without looking cakey which I thought would be the complete opposite because of it being so serum -y. I thought it would kind of like gunk up and get a little heavy or greasy looking which it didn't it actually dries to like a semi matte finish more on the satin natural side but if you are someone with dry skin it does pull a little bit you know more matte on us dry girls versus someone that has oily skin it would be more of like a satin finish but with that being said you guys know I do have dry skin and I absolutely love the finish of it. I just feel like my skin looks very airbrushed. I think that this is a great everyday foundation, something that's very quick and easy to apply. It has the spatula, it goes on beautifully, and it wears really well through the day. So as far as wear time goes, I would say that it lasts me a good seven hours without wearing off right through here, which is really, really impressive. Because if my foundation's gonna wear off on me, it's usually right through this area right here. I'll start noticing my discolorations pop out. I have a lot of dark spots right here that tend to just, you know, want to wiggle their way through my foundation and then also right here on my chin because I'll constantly be doing this through the day which I try not to but it just happens so the foundation will just start breaking up through there but with this foundation if I set it with the photo focus powder I don't have anything coming off until around the seven hour mark and the other day I did test it like throughout the whole day I wanted to see how it lasts and at the nine hour mark I was like I'm ready to get this foundation off but honestly that is a long time for a foundation to be on your skin at least for me I I don't like wearing my foundations too too long so for me to make it nine hours with the foundation on my face that's pretty impressive for me and it still looked okay and I feel like the longer that I wear it on my dry skin the better that it looks it actually just makes the foundation look like skin but a more perfected version of my skin if that makes sense and it actually never settled into my fine lines like right through here I have the most annoying wrinkle right in the middle of my eyebrows it's not an 11 it's just a one and it gets very very deep especially if I wear a dry foundation or if my skin is just feeling extra dry that thing will pop out and drive me crazy so for this foundation not to emphasize that I was very very impressed I also didn't have any problems around my smile lines which I sometimes tend to crease especially if it is more on like the matte side it almost kind of just like blurred over my fine lines which I'm okay with I'm actually really okay with that um, my forehead same way I do have a lot of fine lines right through here and it was okay through the day so as far as wear time I feel like if you're going to be wearing this throughout the day like a work day I feel like it would hold up great for you if you are someone with oily skin I'm pretty sure you would have to powder throughout the day unless you use a really good mattifying powder I will say that is with using no primer at all so that is also something that totally impressed me um, usually I do have to wear something that gives a little bit more moisture in my skin but when I use this foundation I didn't use any primer like I said it did last me about seven hours without noticing any like foundation wearing off through this area for me that's pretty good and it also didn't emphasize my pores and you guys know I always complain about the pores that I have right in this area um, I actually have pretty large pores right there and it didn't emphasize them at all like I said earlier it almost kind of like just airbrushed my skin I just feel like it looks really good right now hopefully the camera is picking up like how good it looks it's actually supposed to be really great for photography and for videography I'm pretty sure I read that they tested this foundation under seven different lighting conditions so that's obviously very good for videography whether you're gonna be outside if you're gonna be inside in daylight like I am right now because of my studio lighting or wherever you're gonna be 
So I thought that that was really cool. And right now I'm in daylight and I feel like it looks really, really good. And one of the major claims with the foundation is actually that it's going to look good with flash photography. So you're not gonna get that white flashback on your face. I kind of geared this whole foundation line and like the powder and the concealer, all of that around photography, which I think is awesome because everyone's taking pictures on their phone these days. So it's just kind of smart to do that. So if you couldn't tell by now, I'm a huge fan of this foundation. I think it's awesome. First of all, you can get it at the drugstore. Second of all, it is only $6, not on sale. And usually you can find Wet n Wild on sale all the time. So that's really awesome. And it also leaves me with a beautiful finish. I just think it's so perfect, whether you have oily skin or dry skin. It's just that like perfect in between. It's not dewy, yet it's not full on matte. It just looks very healthy on the skin. And I just feel like it's very youthful looking. It lasts through a full work day, which is very important for me because obviously I want my foundation to last all day when I'm at work. And again, the finish is just so, so beautiful. So I'm a huge fan of it. It's very affordable and I love the application of it. The only thing I would be hesitant of is if you are someone with extremely oily skin or just oily skin in general, you're probably gonna wanna set this, but if you have oily skin, I'm sure you already do that anyways. And also if you are someone with a very dry skin, this may cling on to your dry patches just because it is more of the satin-ish finish. But for someone with dry skin, it would come off definitely a lot more matte. So just keep that in mind. I think if you pair this with your favorite primer, whether you have oily skin or dry skin, it could definitely work for you. So I'm a huge fan of it. If you guys have tried it, please be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It could also help someone else out that's watching this video that may have a different skin type than I do. And if you haven't tried it yet, I would definitely suggest giving it a go if you're someone that was looking into picking it up. I think it's a really great foundation and it's only $6 from the drugstore, which I think is really, really good. So I've seriously been enjoying it so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This video. If you guys want to see more foundation reviews or demos or first impressions, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and I will see you guys very shortly in my next video next week. Bye!